version 
environment uh, main line. So maybe it would uh, uh, make sense to have uh, two versions of DK1, which is mostly compatible with some, some DK9 uh, with the current version. So it fits for people which say I cannot rewrite my application. And uh, then the new version of DK could have a lot of incompatibilities with our problems because uh, if you use that stuff, you have to rethink about the whole stuff. And Maybe it's not so much different, but uh, you cannot uh, tell in advance what is coming out. So, uh, since it was already uh, what I wanted to tell from my side, so now it's the uh, start of the open discussion. So you can uh, first uh, tell us your uh, comments about what I have presented, if you think that's the correct direction or if they have different ideas about doing all that stuff and um, what I uh, would like to get out of that discussion is uh, that uh, we have uh, some idea of what we want, how we want to make the future version of TK which is the one which is uh, uh, not the normal TK 9.0 and uh, we have, because, we have, because of, we are not so much people we have to decide in, the, in which direction to go, we cannot make uh, three or four or five parallel passes for uh, trying different solutions. And uh, I think it would be good to, to have a common understanding where we want to go. And that's what, what is the idea of that discussion was. Excuse me. Okay, now it's yours. Uh, yeah. To, to, uh, to gain a common understanding, could uh, please elaborate? Uh, could you please elaborate uh, uh, on uh, where do you see uh, potential of uh, compatibility problems? Uh, for example, if uh, the pictures are based on classes, there might be some uh, behavior of calling uh, or configuring stuff on, on that stuff that would be different to the car version. For, for example, in, in, in the current version, uh, you are not even, I don't know if they say that's necessary, but, but uh, for example, um, you cannot inherit from a, from a TK widget because it's not a class. Yeah. And uh, that might uh, bring some uh, interesting ideas if, if you would be able to inherit. So yeah. it, it could easier, for example, extend some widgets uh, yeah. for building bigger widgets because you and have an easier way for looking what options are available. You can get that today in, in uh, calling configure and, and look for that stuff, but that's a different approach if you want to, to make an object or anything. So, sir, so, so, talking about the interfaces or the script interfaces? It's the interfaces and, and the behavior of, of the whole stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, a widget, for example, it, it, today in, uh, in ITK you have, or in iWidgets you have some meta widgets yeah. which are based on ITK and they have uh, some functionality where you are depending on the implementation of ITK. Yeah. So, for example, uh, options are in, in ITK options, you have components mm -hmm. uh, which have to be built in some special uh, agreement uh, for have access to them. Uh, and it, it might be interesting uh, to not directly with that uh, approach, but for example, uh, something like uh, Smith is doing uh, to, to delegate some handling of options or methods to, to some other object. There are some people who say, I don't want to use SNIT only for that reason. Uh, there could still be a uh, SNIT on top of that. Uh, normally, you, you, you can use SNIT and I think in parallel. It's in, in the new version, it's, it's possible only because of I have built in uh, a lot of SNIT functionality in, in the new ITIC version. But, but I, I want to enhance that. Uh, 
to, to get some easier way for configuring mega widgets. To, uh, the stuff which is available today is, is not very comfortable. You have to write a lot of code for, for making stuff. And for example, I, I have the idea to, to get some widgets in, in that direction that you have parts like, like a, a border part, uh, something which is behind the tile in, 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 the, yeah. in the end. And if you have some heavy part, you have an, an inner part, like a label, you have some text part. Yeah. And, and, and then you have uh, just described, for example, instead of an options database, which is uh, only for X11, yeah. you just uh, have some CCS file, a uh, CSS file, and you just have an interpreter which says, ah, yeah, here's the description on how that element should look like. And then some, and then some interpreter inputs, which is uh, just going over that stuff and is building the element as you have described it. But with, without uh, the user, this, uh, so that the user doesn't have to uh, write all the functionality for, for building that, but he has just a description on, on how the different parts or parcels of um, uh, which it should look like. And then there is some functionality which is building a real for example, is, is a starting point of a real button which is, has some uh, theme and all that stuff. And I think we are approaching a point where I ask myself, are we still talking about decay or are we talking about something else? It's, I, I think it's only the name TK, but it's, it's some function, a new functionality yeah. which perhaps should get a different name. Um, can I comment on that? Yeah, sure. Um, obviously, I've influenced my thinking, but I don't care about TK. Yeah. I just want my skills to be applicable to a tablet so I don't have to write Objective C and Cocoa Touch and, and whatever else happens on Android that I avoid. So your question is a good one, is it still cut TK? But yeah. if you take it from the other angle, which is to say, are we looking for portability of our scripts? Yeah. Or are we looking for portability of our skills? And in my case, I'm looking for portability of skills. I don't really care about taking an existing script and moving it onto a tablet, because the chances are, because of the different form factor, screen size, I'm going to have to rewrite it anyway. Yeah. So different events as well. Sorry? Different events as well. Just those. Events. Because it's and touch. Multi touch, all of that stuff. All that TK stuff. Yeah, so I, I say, think it's not TK, yeah. but it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to elaborate a bit on what Steve has said. Uh, I only used TK once, but I had the exact same issue with tableting for web apps. And uh, the question was why we didn't have a TK for web apps. It's the same question, actually. And uh, I ended up writing three different templating systems, one I'm presenting tomorrow. Uh, so one of them was uh, an executable to JavaScript uh, compiler. Pretty much it was using the XJS framework, which could have been jQuery, but it's the same problem, actually. And uh, it's, I, I also think it's not going to be TK, whatever yeah. you decide. I, I don't have a say in the decision, but uh, the problem is, is exactly the same. It's something which will replace the functionality of TK with something which is more appropriate for today's tools. But I think. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you, we will uh, choose for a new TK, I think the basic uh, widget types should be there still. Uh, right. Button sure. should yeah. be there. Yeah. 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 That's, that's not, sorry, that's nothing which is only uh, available in, in, in TK. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a button in, in HTML, uh, we have it in, in JavaScript, so mm -hmm. that's nothing bound to, to TK. Uh, maybe the basic syntax should be also the same. Options. We, we, have, we have some elements which yeah. are building space of the whole stuff. Yeah, but what I was trying to say is there are different restrictions depending on the choice you make. For instance, the, the one that I was using, the XJS framework, the executable to JavaScript compiler, was 
even though it's just many, many common features with what I'm going to present tomorrow, it's a different way of thinking uh, of the application. what I was doing now and uh, take a step in a completely new area before I continue, continue with what I was doing. And I don't want uh, this to happen. Uh, I, I don't think that you will be the only one or every audience uh, one which will write a new CSS stuff. But I think yes, this options database, I, I never did much in the option database. I'm, I was just using it in TK. And somebody has built the, the basic stuff which is needed, and I think it's the same for a CSS file. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Good. One of the things that we're, we've been discussing also is that we don't have to get rid of TCAT. We can still have it as a tool to use. The interface might be the same, but the implementation is might be completely different. There's that. But we could just say, use TK where you want to use TK. Yeah. And then we have something totally different possibly a little bit more consistent in its usage, but yet still following the design principles of TK. Uh, it could be very similar or it could be a little bit different, but more importantly is that it allows us either to take advantage of our skills to do both desktop and web-based applications, uh, as well as leverage the hardware uh, capabilities of the, all the different devices that we want to work with. Because we have to make a trade-off if we want to access the tablets and the phones, um, or even the web. We have to admit that TK doesn't fit. We have uh, a whole layer, a whole hardware interface layer that uh, none of us really have the capability of tackling each one of those individually. Um, so it's it's almost unattainable. But yet we have a couple of the, the common points that Arnold pointed out. Uh, OpenGL is a common uh, common hardware feature that we can take advantage of to make a very appealing um, graphical tool set. And then we have the WebGL, which is another one that, even though it doesn't exist currently on every platform, it's, we're right on the edge of that. So it's the space is the same. Is it, is it OpenGL in the background? And it's still OpenGL in the back, but it's, we're, we're close to having it available on yeah. almost every platform. So. Yeah, I'm not going to this here, but you just said. Uh, I don't know open open geo that well, but uh, the way I see it is that it's as a canvas widget or some some sort of in a in a more generic framework like TK is for desktop applications. Because uh, if, if I think of open open GL driving everything, it's a different sort of uh, application that you can write in, in with open GL driving everything. Uh, compared to, let's say, using HTML5, for instance. But there's no reason why we can't have an interface. Like, of course, uh, and of course, they say the widget familiar to us, but then renders it in OpenGL or renders it in HTML5. Yeah. So that yeah. this way, we still feel comfortable, and we don't get a very high performance penalty. Yes. As, as long as OpenGL does not drive the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Just, absolutely. Let's put it another way. Um, if you listen to the Linux people, sorry, right now. We'd all be programming in Cairo. No, sorry, we'd all be programming in Wayland. No, that won't work on Windows. We'll be using, what's that new thing they've got on Windows 8? You see the problem? Metro. Metro. Yeah. So if, if, we, if we program to those technologies, one, they change their mind every second release. And two, it's not cross-platform. So if you want to regard OpenGL as an assembly language, which we can compile our graphical apps down to transparently and behind the scenes. The other thing is from the web perspective, what web development really needs is a gridded widget manager. Uh, I, 
I can't even find it. Well, yeah, yeah, but... Um, actually, actually that, that's what I was trying to avoid here. Okay, but let, this, if you try doing a, a form-based... Anyway. So what TK does really well is grid widget widget. So why would we want to bring across the, the place with a geometry manager or the pack geometry manager? So there'll be things that are currently in TK for hysterical or historical reasons that we don't need to bring across to a new generation. But there's some core things that have to be there if our skill is going to be more. Yeah, well, what I was trying earlier to say that it would... Uh, sorry, uh, one last comment that would be yeah, just... No, no, <laughs> quiet. What, what I wanted to say is, as an end user, it might still be possible to just say, I want to have a button and it takes a description wherever you find so the internals. And it still produces a button, but it might look different because, for example, using OpenGL, perhaps I can say rotate button by 30 degrees, what, which I cannot do right now. And that's, uh, that's, there might be much more functionality behind the whole stuff, but, uh, but the interface for an end user might be very similar to the one which is uh, today's interface. Uh, I'm just trying to make the separation between having a graphical interface like OpenGL and having something that you can program HTML5 and have some kind of widget, the canvas, that you can rotate if you want to rotate your buttons, you can do it. And so instead of having open, everything compiling to OpenGL, you have this interface layer which you can use OpenGL if you want to, but if you don't want to use OpenGL, you can still compile your application for HTML5 or whatever. I, I don't know who knows what's behind the HTML5, isn't it? Also some I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's just a question. I don't know if somebody wants to say. Sorry? Which part of the HTML5? Which part of the HTML5? Which part of the canvas, for example. Yeah, the canvas. So it's, it's high performance. I'm not sure if it's 3D or scan. Is, is it some na native implementation or is it based on some stuff? Well, the OpenGL will be native. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hopefully, both on the it was just a question, it was at the Yeah, because when you're using the canvas, you pick with... Basically, you pick, you pick which profile you want to do with the first thing you So you can use two D profile or three D profile. Well, one more um, yeah. additional item is that uh, you don't have the, the same restrictions on, the, on different platforms, for instance, if you are writing a web application, you might be interested to actually have HTML for certain just to index that information, but if you are working on a mobile phone, then JavaScript is fine, for instance. So there's all sorts of different questions that have come up. Well, what I would like is to have, uh, as far as I have seen, the functionality of any or more platforms, and how that's done, I don't care about. I just want to, to have that functionality. Because well, what I uh, was very impressed of is uh, how Enio is doing different stuff and the defenders showed me they are displaying the same uh, interface, uh, very different on, on, a, on a mobile phone and a, and a tablet because they are just looking, is there enough space and for example they make a, a table real as a normal table and on, the, on, a, on an iPhone I think it, it was only some menu this where you could uh, look through the, the entries also. And that's done behind you without any uh, uh, difference in your source program. It's, it's behind the scenes with what is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the point I want to have. I want to care about if I'm just programming for a tablet, tablet or a mobile phone or for a normal PC. I just want to have it look nice. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And there's, there's another uh, decision or choice that we can make when we're working with web based applications. We can either use the native widget set that uh, the web browser gives us, and that gives us pretty good performance for 2D TK like applications. <coughs> if we were to utilize something like OpenGL or WebGL, we now have the opportunity to work with graphical primitives where we can actually define the TK button as a group of primitives. So that not only can now Instead of having to inherit a button and then modify it, we can actually modify the core button structure. And uh, so that's something that we can never do with TK. In fact, TK widgets are very hard to create because if you can't 
Uh, if you don't understand the C code and the X11 uh, paradigm behind it, uh, it makes it difficult to add a new widget. But if we had something that had a powerful um, processing engine like OpenGL or WebGL, and we could create uh, widgets based on the primitive set and then use TCL to put the primitive together to still have high performance, now we've just opened up a new opportunity for us to make a uh, much more vast set of widgets. You know, using, again, using the skills that we already have, but yet we're not C programmers. So there's some there's potential here for, for something really different than what we used to. Mm -hmm. But would that be what we want? Uh, if we define what the button looks like, uh, then it would look the same on all platforms. Do we want that or do we want something that looks like a native button on Android? We want it. We want it. We want everything. Yes, yeah, that means we do not even expect the button yeah. that he is used to on his platform. And I think nowadays it's also, uh, it's also that it's more platform specific and more society more platforms. Yeah. It was different in the past. Yeah, we brought up, it's interesting because uh, there's a lot of people that feel very strongly about how the button should look. I come from an industrial control background. I want the button to look identical on every single platform, whether it's a phone or that can touch the windows because it has to, because I need to, it has to be predictable to the pixel. I need to know that it looks identical. I don't know. 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 I don't but if you want to go to the pixel, you have a problem because looking for the Android, you have so many different devices, you can't define the exact pixel centric layout for all available devices. Not, not that you have to have some rules for protecting the device, this way and this part elastic and that. But, but, but what you can do is you can uh, ask for the characteristics of your device and then you can have define some no. rule. Why no, you can have a bunch of four or five hundred defined and no and, and you just say if, if it's in that range then make it like that. Yes. That's the point. Not, not for every uh, there is single one. But what you say is if it's uh, in between the no, 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 fifteen inches or make that this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well yeah, I actually uh, it's closest to the because I really believe that uh web is the user interface in the near future. And uh, it's available on all devices and everywhere you have HTML5, you have CSS, you have JavaScript. And of course, I think Tickle should somehow connect to this to be available on all platforms. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it, it, it is the greatest common denominator. I mean, it's something that helps. But I, mean, I think we should all think about uh, that these people which have, for example, developed Enio are working for 15 years in the user environments which mm -hmm. have different size uh, screens. So they have some experience here. Yeah. 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 I, I just think mm -hmm. that they have already done that stuff which mm -hmm. we are thinking about. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can just read some documents from their side and see what, what they have found out mm -hmm. how it should look like. Yes. And it's always a problem if you think as a developer how it looks like it's, it's mostly different to the ones which are being used. Yes, because there's a third part. Yeah. You must forget. We also have designers. Yeah. We use experience design. Exactly. And the web has the advantage that many designers are already familiar with the tools to create designs for the web. Mm -hmm. And then they can also create designs for the application if you use this kind of and interface. And if you make uh, Tickle stuff uh, flexible enough, you can have an interface for house designers which goes with the same primitives. Mm -hmm. So it might be possible to yeah. make uh, those people. And even the stuff that the <laughs> uh, people have done, yeah. it may be great, yeah. but that's the problem people have. It hasn't won on the market. But so that's, 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 that's why I think we should look <coughs> for, for people that have done a lot of uh, uh, experience with this. Uh, 
because uh, a palm is completely different to a PC. Mm -hmm. So they have, I'm pretty sure, a very different experience from, 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 from the back, from feedback from mm -hmm. users. Yeah, they, these people have done it for a long time, but I've never heard of them. And I know maybe a smaller group of people, but there's millions of people who work with web and web technology creating yeah. responsive design from smartphone to HD screen. Yeah. So if you take the not uh, the period of time, but the period of time multiplied with the number of people working on it, maybe there's even more experience than having together yeah. on web technology. I, I think no. this is a I think I work with some of the top graphic designers in North America and almost invariably we, they're wrong because there is no one size fits everything and uh, so we have to make compromises somewhere but the fact is TK at the moment looks crap out of the box um, and so we've got to, at some point we've got to put a stake in the ground and say we want TK not to embarrass us basically. Um, and the reason I push the Enyo one initially with Arnold is, to me, it seems to be a good compromise. They've put some thought in, um, and it's practical thought. Uh, it's practical thought that on average looks good out of the box everywhere, and would, would enable us to, if we could combine that look out of the box with our TK way of programming, we'd be able to put together an app really quickly that won't embarrass us if we're amongst a bunch of GNOME users or Mac users or, or whatever. So uh, I think we're going to have to make compromises, but the compromises should be in our favor. I also think you should really look, uh, I've never heard about any before uh, Steve broke it, and I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, it's the worst to look into that and see what they have done. They have, uh, I, I think it's 50 or more uh, uh, demos which uh, can look at just different stuff like uh, some um, bouncing balls or tables or selection of menus whatsoever. So you can really try it and try, try it on your normal PC and try it on, on your uh, iPhone or what's it, on your iPhone. It's, it's really impressive. I'll give you a URL yeah. what well, yeah. I would like to take into account is that since Hayes the point to looking back or not changes so quickly uh, just about a few years ago, on the web, everything had to have uh, uh, shining and yeah. rounded soft corners buttons. And now, all of a sudden, something like flat design pops up. So, anything we adopt has been flexible enough that it can be styled in the CSS style so that we can keep the functionality but change the style and the appearance of things. Yeah. If we go to something that we think looks nice now, may look old fashioned in three or four or five years. That's the whole point of using TK as a programming abstraction, because that part doesn't change. Mm -hmm.